Sunday, our logo for our church reminds us of the three parts of the Trinity as well as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and reminder that Christ is coming again, that we too shall rise again with him one day. Now let us sing, Holy, Holy, Holy is the Lord God Almighty, number 64 in your name. Follow him. What, what does he tell us? us? 
He tells us of those like the Good Samaritan who was marginalized, yet who knew we are all neighbors. Who are our neighbors? Jesus describes the ten bridesmaids, five without oil and five with oil for their lamp. He wants us to be like the five who withhold their oil from those he wants us to be like those five who withhold their oil from those in need, who claim their social privilege as a sign of their worthless worthiness in the eyes of God. Does he want us to be like the bridegroom who closes the door of the five women when they return with their hard dark oil? Jesus tells us to love our neighbors, all people, and to give it to those who have nothing. What does he tell us? He says we are to give food to the hungry. He says give drink to the thirsty. He says clean up the clothed and the naked. Care for those who are sick. Visit those in prison. Always we should welcome the stranger. Why should we do these things? We do these things because every time we serve another, it is the same as if we were doing these acts for Jesus himself. God of the oppressed, oppressed protector of the poor, poor liberator of the unfree, help us to live our lives in service to our neighbors, and so in service to you. Amen. You may be seated. Read now from our New Testament lesson from Luke chapter 10. But he wanted to justify himself, he asked Jesus. And who is the man? In reply, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the road, and when he saw the man, he passed by the other side. So too a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he was with him, took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring oil and wine. Then he put the man in his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took him, took him, brought him to the inn and took care of him. The next day he took two denarii and gave it to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any cost or expenses you may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? And the expert of the law replied, The one who had mercy on him. And Jesus told him, Go and do my life. Now our choir will lead us in our special music for the day. <coughs>
Jones, if you grab a hymnal, turn back to page 800 and 881, 881 in the back of your hymnals. Today we celebrate Trinity Sunday and throughout uh, the different councils they formed the Apostles' Creed and the Nicene Creed and other ways to be able to define what it is that we believe. And often when we have baptism, as we will next week, we'll be baptizing Sybil's great-granddaughter uh, next week. We share the Apostles' Creed and when we become members of the church, let us join in remembering this historic affirmation of faith on page 881. Let us share this together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and was seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. I want to just keep that page open. We're going to look at the Nicene Creed in a little bit. Um, but at this time, let us have our ushers come forward as we give our morning tithes and talk. Nicene Creed that was created at the Council of Nicaea, and some talk about who is Saint Nicholas, who Santa Claus is named after. He was part of the Nicene Council of Nicaea. This real Saint Nicholas was part of that. I say like this. I like the words of the Nicene Creed, and it goes into even more detail, especially who Jesus and the Holy Spirit is. Let's share the Nicene Creed together as we celebrate Trinity Sunday. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, 
light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father, who will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of our sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We are thankful for these historic affirmations of faith and we hold these as our firm beliefs as we continue to strive to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. I know Maureen mentioned one prayer concern for our friend Ruan. Also, uh, Nancy Campos's uh, dog passed away. So we're going to Nancy their prayers as well. Are there others that have any other prayer concerns or praises today? BJ? Kenneth Davis. That's part of my dad. Kenneth Davis. Okay. And BJ? Art. So prayers for a little time we came from. younger, some older. Uh, one gentleman is, his funeral is today. Uh, he is receiving one of our parish halls. Uh, his family more is Sam Jim, Jim Bird. Uh, yesterday they buried a, a relatively young gal who uh, a, a musician, a fantastic musician, a whole family, very active in the community. Uh, Kimberly um, Wilder, Black Wilder, um, and she was buried yesterday. Another one uh, a couple of days ago. It's been, a, it's been a very rough time. Uh, so prayers for that community and those families and their homes all over. Because they're all one big family. Any others? I'm praying for my grandson. It's a basic training in Paris Island. I hope he doesn't get hurt and pass, pass the test of flying. All right. And we thank you for his service. Any others? A uh, friend of mine, Sybil Breton, she is going to be having surgery in a couple of weeks, and she is very nervous about it and just has asked for prayer. Mm -hmm. yeah. So my wife's cousin had twins this uh, yesterday. Her cousin had two little twins, so we're, we, 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 I just, she just sent me pictures of them while we were at the pulpit here today. So she had <laughs> so, so, but we're excited to welcome twins into our family as, as well. Let us be in an attitude of prayer then, as we gather together today. Our God, we do thank you for this time that we're able to gather together as the, as the weather warms up outside. We pray, oh Lord, that more importantly, you would warm our hearts today. We gather together today as we go through the reminder of the church year and we move into this new season. We pray, oh Lord, that we would do more than just go through the motions, but help us to truly honor you as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Help us, O oh Lord, not to deviate to the right or to the left from these historic affirmations of faith that's contained in your Holy Scriptures. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would help us to be the foundation and help it to be the common denominator that help us join together with brothers and sisters around the world. We ask, O oh Lord, that as we gather together today, we thank you as we celebrate Maureen and Ray who are celebrating birthdays. We pray a blessing upon them. We pray for those who are sick. We pray for Maria that is battling cancer, and Sybil that is going in for surgery. And we ask that you would, you're, would be with Kenneth as he's having his heart trouble. We pray, Lord, that your healing hand would be with them all. We pray for comfort for, for Jim and Kimberly's family and for a member of our HA group. That we, as we remember this week, we pray, Lord, that you would comfort all those who mourn. 
We know, O Lord, that you promised that you would not leave us orphaned or abandoned when you ascended to heaven, that, that your Holy Spirit would come. And as we celebrated that last week on Pentecost, we, we remember how when Peter spoke, and you spoke clearly that everyone could hear in their own language, and not only did they hear, but they also received the gifts of your Spirit. We pray, O Lord, that you would help us to unpack those gifts that you have given to us and use them for kingdom building. Help us, O Lord, to, to learn your lessons that you taught in the parables, and help us, O Lord, to put them into practice. Help us, O Lord, to see the needs of those around us, and help us to do all things in the name of your Son, Jesus. As we give the cups of cold water, as we clothe those who are naked, as we reach out to those who are poor and those who are hungry, help us, O Lord, to do so not that we may be recognized, but you may be glorified in all things. We thank you for those who, who continue to serve and serve our country and serve our nation. We pray, the Lord, for those who are running for office. We pray, the Lord, that you would give us a spirit of discernment as we begin this primary process as we true, choose leaders to, to guide us. We pray, the Lord, that you would help us to choose the right people and, and to turn this nation back towards you. And we ask, O oh Lord, for our men and women who are serving in the military, for this young man that's at Paris Island and those for basic training. We pray, O oh Lord, that your hand of protection would be upon him and upon all of our soldiers deployed around the world. May you watch over them and guide them. We ask, O oh Lord, for your divine intervention as events around the world seem to be unfolding quickly. For sometimes we may wonder what's going to happen next, but we know, Lord, that you are the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. You are the same Father, Son, and Holy Spirit that ever was and ever will be. And we know, Lord, that you have everything under control. Help us, O oh Lord, not to fear tomorrow, but help us to trust in you every step of the way. Heal us, guide us, strengthen us, and teach us who is our neighbor, as we pray the way you taught us to pray by saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We gather together today and we celebrate the, the three in one. We celebrate, we read the Apostles' Creed and the Nicene Creed, and it seems like all great stories have three parts to them, right? Even, even when we're little, when we learn nursery rhymes, when we're little, we learn the story of the three little pigs, right? And, you know, the one that built his house out of straw, and the one that built him out of sticks, and the one that built him out of bricks. And, and you know, we learn about when the big bad wolf, he comes and he huffs and he puffs and he's going to blow the house in, right? And, and we tell the stories and we learn our children and we learn those stories over and over again. And one of the first stories that I had to give my first public speaking lesson, I went to speech class, I didn't talk much when I was little. I had to dress up like Papa Bear, I actually had a bad puppet, a little paper brown paper bag puppet. And I was Papa Bear, my best friend Sean Cash up. He wanted to be Goldilocks in the play, and, 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 and he looked like Flip Wilson, and they made this yellow wig for him, and, and we had one of those old three-story old brick buildings, you know, one of the old elementary schools in Cyprus, and, and I would be, oh, Papa Bear, and someone's been sitting in my chair, and, you know, and David Pfeiffer would be, oh, I'm Baby Bear, you know. We'd go through the whole play, and, and Sean Cash would come running, here I is, and, and he would be Goldilocks. And they made us do that play like 30 times through every class that we went, and we did the, did the play, the Goldilocks and the Three Bears. And then the next year, we went on to second grade, and we got out of speech class. And, and uh, we, we did King Miser's Gold, and I was the king in the first half of the play, and Sean was the king in the second half of the play. He was my best friend growing up. But it started off telling that story of the three parts, and I'm still telling stories of three parts stories. And it's not about booty locks and the three bears, it's about a little girl that breaking and entering into somebody else's house, and then over all the other things. But we're here to talk about a different kind of story. And today we want to tell another story. Jesus was a great storyteller. We all know the stories of the three little pigs and Goldilocks and the three bears and all the other nursery rhymes. 
Jesus was a great storyteller, and Jesus was able to tell the story. If you, throughout summer, if you see all the sermon titles on the, on the back of your bulletin, we're going to be looking at a lot of the parables that Jesus told to the different people. Jesus used lots of common objects. And as someone said, I just love when you do your children's message, that's all I need. Like I get that simple concept, you know, that little object or whatever you have, and I kind of get the, 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 the big idea of what's going on in the story. And Jesus did this with different crowds of different people. He used different illustrations. So now and through, actually running down through October, I really focused on the parables of Jesus to try to retell some of these famous stories. But the parable of the Good Samaritan, if my computer will work here, is another story that has three characters in it. There was once a man traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho, and on his way he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes and money and beat him and left him dead beside the road. Luckily a priest happened to be going down the same road, but when he saw the man lying there, he crossed to the other side of the road and he passed by him. Next, a temple assistant or a Levite saw him lying there, and he also passed by on the other side. The Samaritan came along, and when he saw the man's condition, his heart went out to him. Kneeling beside him, the Samaritan cleaned his wounds and bandaged him, and he, left, and he lifted him onto his donkey and took him to an inn where he took care of him. In the morning he took out and gave two silver coins and gave it to the innkeeper. Take good care of him, he said. If it costs any more, put it on my bill, and I'll be back to you on my and I'll pay you back on my way back. And Jesus asked, Which of these three do you think has done what would Jesus do? The one who had mercy, and we are called to do like Jesus did. The parable of the Good Samaritan, someone from the other side of the tracks. This this Good Samaritan. The Jews and Samaritans were from two different worlds. They didn't associate each other. The other side of the tracks, as, as it were. But Jesus uses this parable to teach us who is my neighbor. But just like in Goldilocks and the Three Bears, about Goldilocks breaks and enters into the Three Bears' house and eats their porridge and breaks their furniture and sleeps in their bed and other things. In this story, we see characters of robbers. There's robbers that their whole philosophy is what what is yours is mine. They want to take what doesn't belong to them. And we look around us and we see many thieves uh, uh, among us and, and around us and in our communities and in our world today that people just want to take what you have. They don't want to work for it. They don't want to earn it. They just want to take, take what is yours. Or the priest, it says, what is mine is mine. They want to keep what is mine. They don't want to share what they have. They don't want to give it to them. They earn what they have and they're going to keep it for themselves. And the good Samaritan who says, what is mine is yours, and our response of going and do likewise. Jesus again uses these parables, and we'll be again, as I said, as we look from now and through through October, we'll be looking at the parables of hidden treasure and lost coins and lost sheep and the, and the marriage feast and the other things that are going on. Jesus uses all these different illustrations to remind us and say, you need to become like one of those characters. Just like I had to become Papa Bear and Sean had to become Goldilocks. They kept part of the story. We can put ourselves into the parables, into the stories that Jesus is speaking. But the real question is, who is my neighbor? Right? When we say we believe on Trinity Sunday, we believe in God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is our God. And we said the greatest commitment of all is to love the Lord God with all your heart, with all your mind, and all your soul. And we pledge our allegiance to, to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But Jesus says the second commandment is just as important as the first. If you say, I love God, but hate my brother or hate my neighbor, do you really love God? He's challenging us to say, love God and love my neighbors. And the Pharisees and the teachers of the law try to trick Jesus. And they kept saying, and who is my neighbor? So Jesus teaches them this parable of the Good Samaritan. It wasn't the good disciple. It wasn't the good priest. It wasn't the good Levite. It wasn't the good Christian. It was the Good Samaritan. It was the person on the other side of the tracks, the one who maybe wouldn't have known the message that actually showed the greatest example of love. What shall I do to inherit in, in eternal life? Was the question the Pharisees asked. As you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, all your mind, and your neighbor as myself. And again, the big question is, 
and who is my neighbor? Jesus again shares the story of the Good Samaritan. And we all see people when we find an accident, you know, and whether it's on 501 or 544, you find someone in trouble. Do you stop and respond or do you keep on moving? You know, or do you rubber neck to try to see what's what's happening on the, on the other side? Do we stop and respond when we see some kind of need? And oftentimes when we get that urge in our heart that says when someone should do something about that, chances are God is speaking to, to you to do something about it. I right know. Like Debbie and I, we watched the Machine Gun Preacher movie years ago. We got it, we rented it on Red Box and watched the DVD. And at the end, we said, Oh, someone should help this guy. And a little later did we know that we'd both be in Africa a few years later, you know, and actually serving side by side. You know, but God puts that desire in your heart to be able to see a need and to be able to do something about it. But we all know this is what is yours is mine. And even today in our society, you know, in the midst of COVID and other things, many people got payments and different things for not working. They got paid COVID pays and other things. A lot of people got money for not earning it, but they got compensated for being laid off or, or other things. Or other people rob us, as we see every day. We hear crimes in our streets, crimes in our communities. People break into your cars and break into your homes. And then my buddy Dave at the parsonage, you know, last year, someone pushed the garage door button in my garage because I left the car unlocked and came into my garage and my buddy's wallet was sitting on it, on the grill of the garage. They stole his wallet right out of the parsonage, you know, and, and, and took it. You know. So we, we know what it's like to be robbed or be taken advantage of. And that's what robbers do. They don't care if you bought it or who earns it. They just want what you have and they're going to take it, right? And that is what these thieves did to the Samaritan. And then the priest that comes walking by says, what well, mine is mine. And, and the priest didn't want it to be defiled by the, by the person that was all bloody. Because if he was on his way to the temple, if he stopped to touch someone who was wounded or, or hurt, he could be considered unclean if he touched uh, someone who was wounded or other things. And so he wanted to keep what is his and he passed by on the other side. And likewise, even the, the, the lay leader comes walking by and, and, and and passes by on the other side. But then the Good Samaritan comes passes by and he sees the man and he didn't care what race he is or what color he is or if he's rich or if he's poor. All he did was see someone that was in need and someone that was hurt. And so what did he do? He stopped. He bound up his wounds, gave him something to drink. He put him on his donkey, took him to the inn and gave the innkeeper extra money. He said, when I return, I'll give you even more. He didn't care. He didn't look at the outside. He didn't, didn't say, do you believe the Apostles' Creed first before I help you? Do you believe this before I help you? He just saw someone in need. And we're called to care for people that are in need. It doesn't matter if they're just believe as we believe or they look like we look like. But Jesus calls us to reach out and care for all people. When we see a need, if we have the resources and the ability and the help, we're called to help doesn't mean that we have to have a free handout for everyone. I think we need to be able to teach people to fish for themselves. We don't want to enable people to just stay in their circumstances, but we need to be able to reach out and help people to better them and equip them and, and, and take care of them as we are able to. What is your attitude like when we look at this story? We, just like we look at the story of the three bears, some could be Papa Bear, Mama Bear, Baby Bear, Goldilocks. In this story, we can see ourselves you know, are we like the robbers? Do we just want to take from everybody else? You know, or do we want to hoard what we have and keep what we have like the religious people? Or are we more like the good Samaritan that's willing to help people regardless of who they are? Who is my neighbor? As we look at that broader definition of, of neighbor. Because if it says we love the Lord God with all of our heart, mind, and soul, we must love our neighbor. And who is our neighbor? And our neighborhood is more than just our neighborhoods that we grew up in. Our neighborhood is a we're really a global neighborhood. We're, in, we're a, a, a big world that we're in that God has created us all to care for one another. We are called to live beyond and have that same kind of attitude as the Good Samaritan says, what is mine is yours, that we're called to be able to go and do likewise. I said at the top of our bulletin, I have that little word, Matthew 28, 19, as it talks about the Great Commission it says to go into all the world and make disciples of Jesus Christ. One of the best ways that we can go is to go and be like the Good Samaritan, to be able to go and respond to different needs that, that we see. 
You know, one of the reasons I like being a part of the United Methodist Church is because the United Methodist Committee on Relief, they go and respond to crises after crises after crises around the world, whether it's in Haiti or in Africa or, or the Gulf Coast or wherever it be after floods and hurricanes and storms. And they're there for many, many years, even after other organizations leave, they continue to stay there and care for the people and to educate people, to rebuild people and, and to do all things. But they do so in the name of Jesus. They're intentional about doing it in the name of Jesus. I like that in our church that we are part of a, that has a, a, a social creed, a social gospel that reaches out and cares for people. Why are we putting a clothing bin in a food bin and, and putting hundreds of loaves of bread out each each week because people are hungry in our community you know as we look around and we see the wages of a, of a gallon of gas you know, a gallon of gas is five six dollars a, a gallon and, and then we read in the bible said the last days be a day's wages for a loaf of bread we think oh that could never happen but we look around and we have hundreds of people coming for a free loaf of bread each week rather than paying four or five dollars a, a, a bag of bread you know at the grocery store and it's going to get worse before it even gets better as, as we look down as, as we live in our world today and how do we make it through these rough times as we as we see economic changes and other things it's by caring for one another it's about sharing with what we have it's about loving our neighbors and going the extra mile to be able to care for each other jesus says go and do likewise and to broaden our definition of who is our neighbor. A few years ago, we put this bulletin board up and we advertised it and we said, we have an open door policy, but do we really? Do we really want an open door policy? Do we really want everyone to come in that are different? Do we really want to accept people no matter what they look like, whether they're rich, they're poor, or they're whatever, whatever, or back up? Yeah. Now, this is what the kingdom of God looks like, you know, that we're called to to welcome people no matter where they're from or what their backgrounds are. And, but it's, it's difficult because we do put litmus tests on different people, but who are we called to, to respond to? You know, it doesn't matter if you're hungry, if you're white or black or yellow or green or purple or whatever. If you're hungry, you're hungry. You know, that we're called to care for people who are, are hungry. We're called to be able to feed them. And I know when I was first married, we were getting food stamps, and we, and we used to have to trade our food stamps in order to get laundry soap and deodorant because you couldn't buy toothpaste and, and other things like that on food stamps. And I was making $12,000 a year, we were poor. You know, I was going to seminary and going to school, and we didn't have enough food. And, and I didn't know what it like. I grew up in a, in a, in a good middle class family. I never knew what a food stamp was, but then I got married and had two stepchildren and a baby on the way and got whipped cheese and other things. And, and we had to eat lots of oodles and noodles and spaghetti and stuff because that was what you could afford, you know, or you had to trade your food stamps for some some tide or whatever it needed to be able to wash your clothes. And so my, out of that experience, I learned we started a taxable good food pantry at my old church so that people could get paper towels, toilet paper, laundry soap, dish soap, toothpaste and stuff that people couldn't get on food stamps and, and, and other things. And we found that that was a need. That, 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 and I was living that need at, at the time and kind of learned, learned, the, learned the hard way. Um, learned what it is to have plenty and learn what it is to have not. And so we don't want to stub our nose when people are standing in line at the food line and they have their WIC card and it takes them longer to, to check out or whatever it may be. You know, but we need to be, respond to people. Who, who are hungry and struggling to be able to put food on their table. You know, when we bring our extra canned goods and we put them in the, in the, in the counter, you know, there's some people that's all they have. And our kids at school, we feel bad in the summertime. The kids that get a, a hot meal at lunch and then during the summertime, they don't always get those meals. You know, where are they gonna get their food from? And to be able to go and to be able to eat. There's lots of hungry people in our community and, and, our, and around the world. But we have so much in abundance, we waste so much in our country that we could feed the whole world if we would just uh, organize ourselves and, and, and structure ourselves in, in the right way. But today we see in our world today, as we see the conflicts in Russia and Ukraine and elsewhere around the world, and they're destroying prime farmlands and other things, that they would produce lots of food and, and other things. 
but we need to be able to come together to care for one another. That we can't just say what's mine is mine and hoard it for ourselves, but we have to be willing to share it. Just as the cost of gas goes up, the cost of keeping the lights on and the bills and the church go up and other things, you know, and we all, we're all strapped. You know, but God blesses us, just as the widow who, who dropped in the two pence, she gave all that she had. She gave all that they had and God blessed her. And God will bless us as we continue to give. When we reach out and give to others, God always gives in return. We have been blessed abundantly in so many ways. We freely can worship here. We're in a safe place. Even though the economy is rough right now, we're living by the beach. We have all that we, all that we really need. And God will continue to guide us. But we need to think about really who is our neighbor and how we're going to respond to them. So take time to get to know your neighbors. Take time to know one another. And take time to stop. When you see someone in need, go and do likewise as Jesus said. If you turn at the back of your hymnals one more time, on page 886, 886. <coughs> Another affirmation of faith, 886. This is our social affirmation. It reminds us that we are connected with people uh, around the world and how that we are called to respond to them as Jesus says to go and do likewise. On page 886, this is the United Methodist affirmation of faith. You can respond with the bold colored words. We believe in God, creator of the world, and of all people, and in Jesus Christ incarnate among us who died and rose again, and in the Holy Spirit, present with us to guide, strengthen, and comfort. We believe, Lord, God, help our unbelief. We rejoice in every sign of God's kingdom and uphold the human dignity and community of every expression of love, justice, and reconciliation, and each act of self-giving on behalf of others, and the abundance of God gifts entrusted to us that we may have enough in all responsible uses of the earth's resources. Glory be to God Almighty, and on earth peace. We confess our sin individual and collective by science or action through the violence of human dignity based on race, class, age, sex, nation, or faith, through the exploitation of people because of the greed of indifference, through the misuse of power in personal, communal, national, or international life, through the search for security by those military and economic forces that threaten human existence, through the abuse of technology which enables, which endangers the earth and all of life upon it. Lord have mercy, Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. We commit ourselves individually as a community to the way of Christ, to take up the cross, to seek life for all humanity, to struggle for peace and justice and freedom, to risk ourselves in faith, hope, and love, praying that God's kingdom may come. Thy kingdom come on earth. May we continue to seek our neighbors, may we respond and do likewise as we love our neighbors, as we say we love our Lord. For when we serve them, it is like serving Christ. Trinity Sunday, as we honor the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit, let us also love one another. Let us stand and sing our closing hymn, How Great Thou Art, number 77.
Go now and do likewise, and love your neighbor as Christ has loved you. Amen. Amen. Thank you.